how do you go about implementing these calls? So there are two approaches. People don't typically go and optimize, well, they have to write a library for a given architecture, right? So they don't typically go and optimize all these collectives separately, right? Instead, they have some building blocks. So let's talk about that. So one approach is, these are called the spanning tree algorithms. Okay. What happens in this case is that they basically optimize broadcast, they optimize reduce, they optimize scatter, and they optimize gather. These are the four calls that are typically optimized, right? Well, all to all is separate. So all to all is always has special handling. So we won't talk about all to all, but let's talk about the remaining collectives, right? So typically in the spanning tree algorithms, these are the collectives which are typically optimized, right? And now what happens to the remaining collectives? How do you implement the remaining collectives? The remaining collectives are implemented by reusing these basic building blocks. Okay. So let's see, what are the other calls? So there is all reduce. How can we implement all reduce? So if you do a reduce followed by a broadcast, right? So you reduce all the data to a single node and then you broadcast those, that data to all the nodes, right? That's basically an all reduce. At the end, all the processes will have the final operation being performed on all the elements of the array. Okay, so that's how you do all reduce. How do you do reduce scatter? So reduce scatter can be done by combining reduce and scatter. That's simple, right? First you reduce all the data on a single rank, right? And then you just scatter the elements to all the ranks, right? So that's a reduce scatter. Yeah. For doing what? For uh, implementation of reduce scatter? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So as far as you are concerned, right, we spoke about the interface, the reduce scatter interface, right, the API. So anything over and above that, that MPI needs, MPI has to allocate and take care of it, right? That's not the user's problem, okay? You don't have to worry about that. And the third one is all gather. So how do you do all gather? Well, again, you just do a gather followed by a broadcast, right? First you gather all the data onto a single node and then you just broadcast it to all the nodes, right? So not so difficult. You can actually do this quite efficiently. Let's see why, right? So these are called spanning tree algorithms. So typically what happens is that you build some kind of a spanning tree, right? This is a tree. This is the root, right? Now, let's say I want to implement all reduce. How do I implement all reduce? All reduce is implemented as reduce plus broadcast. So first let's talk about reduce, right? So what happens in reduce? In reduce, the leaves send the data up. This parent then sends the data forward, right? Similarly, these guys send the data here. This sends the data here and so on. Right, this sends the data here. Can you see the direction of communication? Yeah. So it's all from the leaves upwards, right, to the root. Okay. And what does each processor have to do over here? Well, this processor has to add up these two elements. It's a reduce operation, right? If it's, let's say, MPI sum, then it has to add up both those elements and forward that added value, right? You don't want to forward two values. You're doing an MPI sum, so you're getting two values. You'll add them up and forward that value, right? And then this, okay, so before this, you have to go bottom up, right? You have to traverse bottom up. So this node will add up these two values, then it will forward it over here. Then this node will add up the, this and this value and forward it here and, and so on, right? So you see how it's happening. So that's the reduce. One of the things that is done is pipelining, right? Let's say that you are on this particular processor, right? You don't want to wait for that entire data to arrive before you forward it to the next processor. That's wastage of resources, right? You're not using the bandwidth enough. So basically you divide your data down into chunks, into packets or chunks, 
and first you send the first packet on, on these two links and then this processor adds up those two chunks. So, the, each chunk may be you know an, an array of maybe 32 elements or something of that sort, right? whatever the packet size is. So, it is going to add up those 32 elements and in the second iteration it is going to forward that one over here and in the meanwhile these two ranks will start forwarding the second packet, right? this is called pipelining. So, you are interleaving the communication. So, after a little while all the links will be busy, all the data will be traversing from the root, it is like water flowing through the pipes, right? all the links will be busy and data will be flowing through the entire network. Is that clear? So, how do I complete my all reduce? I have to do a broadcast also. So, how do I do the broadcast? Yeah. That node after the after first addition, will it wait for all other nodes to receive all first packets? This one? Yeah. For from all down here? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it has to, right? Because for element 0, the first packet, until it doesn't get the first packet, okay. how is it going to add up? If it doesn't add up, then it's sending data twice, which is wastage of bandwidth, communication bandwidth, right? So it's going to wait for the first packet, but the point is, it's only the first packet it has to wait for. After that, everything will come synchronized, because in the very next iteration, it's going to get the second packet from both directions. So maybe that uh, left tree maybe deeper. Large enough. Yeah. yeah. So there is some wastage of time, right? Because it has to wait for the first packet. What I am saying is that the first packet is the only packet it has to wait for. After that, it will get the second packet from both the leaves, the third packet from both the leaves, fourth packet from both the leaves and so on. Mm -hmm. So, it is only the initial delay that will be there. So, now the root has all the data, right? it has the reduced value. So, are we going to complete the all reduce? Well, it is going to broadcast the data back to all the nodes. How does it broadcast back? Exactly in the opposite direction. right? Uh, the broadcast is exactly in the direction opposite to all the blue arrows. Okay. Again, we are assuming all links are bidirectional. So, if your links are bidirectional, then there is no contention here, right? The broadcast is happening on links which are separate from the reduce, separate directions, right? So, if we consider each bidirectional link to be two unidirectional links, they are all separate links. You can similarly, you know, look at reduce, scatter and all gather, they can also be implemented in a similar way on the spanning tree. Okay, so, these are called the spanning tree algorithms. Then there is another set of algorithms. So, these are actually called the bucket algorithms. The building blocks are reduce, scatter, all gather, scatter and gather, right? And what do you build on top of these? Well, you have to implement your all reduce. All reduce is actually the combination of reduce, scatter and all gather. So, what does reduce scatter do? Reduce scatter does a reduction, but the final result is scattered across all the processors. Now, if you gather all this data on all the nodes, you get the all reduce. And similarly, if you combine reduce scatter with just gather instead of all gather, you get reduce. So, first you do a reduce which is scattered on all the processors and then you gather it on a single rank. That is a reduce operation. And finally, if you combine all gather and scatter, you get a broadcast. So, first you do a scatter. One rank has the data, it wants to do a broadcast. So, it first scatters the data to all the processors and then all of them do an all gather on that data. Eventually, everybody will have all the data. Okay. So, typically in MPI implementations, this is what is done. So, they do not end up optimizing all the routines separately. What they do is either they optimize this set of routines or this set of routines and then they build the remaining collectives on top of that. All right.